What's up YouTube, Jeff back again. Today I got another exciting video for you guys. Today I'm gonna to be talking about five reasons that the Galaxy S22 Ultra destroys the Pixel 7 Pro. Mainly these are gonna be five reasons why I am probably going to go back to the S22 Ultra even after I'm done with my review period on the Pixel 7 Pro. Huge shout out to Google for sending out the phone. I uh, really appreciate being on Team Pixel. But there's a couple things that from Samsung I just need in my daily workflow that the Pixel doesn't offer. And I'm gonna talk about those things today. I already made a video talking about why I like things about the Pixel. So if you wanna check that out below, you can check out the link in the description in the pinned comment. Also, if you guys are gonna pre-order a Galaxy S23 Ultra, I already have my mystery boxes available. You can find them on my website in the pinned comment and description. You'll get a free case, you'll get a free cleaning kit, you'll get a free phone stand, some other goodies like gift cards from Amazon, prepaid SIM cards, other cool stuff, 100% free. Just choose your size, S23, S23 Plus, S23 Ultra, zero dollars. I ship them for free. They'll ship in February when the phone launches. So let's talk about it. The Pixel 7 Pro is a really nice phone. Don't get me wrong. But the first thing that I really need that I can't get with the Pixel 7 Pro is multitasking. I do a lot of jobs. Not only do I have my YouTube channel, I also work full time as an instructor at a university which means I need a lot of flexibility on my phone and Samsung offers that. So if you want to multitask, you know, you can basically drag and drop now because One UI 5 Beta has this awesome feature where you can drag and drop, get into split screen, of course. I love using split screen on my device uh, to do things like researching YouTube videos while also browsing Twitter, taking notes at the same time that I'm browsing Twitter, Instagram, or, you know, answering emails from my students while also doing one of those things. And then if you want to browse around, instead of using split screen view, you can also go in and let's say I want to use the pop-up view instead, just tap here, or you can actually drag and drop open in pop-up view. And then while I'm doing other things, I can close this window and come back to it later on. Now on the Pixel, there is really no enhanced multitasking like this. Now, sure, of course, you do have the option to go through and you know you can get easily between two apps at a time. You can select text from them. There's some cool things that you can do from your recent apps menu, but there's really nothing that you can do that's as robust as you would find inside Samsung One UI 5.0. So I find that the multitasking on the Samsung device is just a huge advantage for me and the way they handle split screen multitasking, the number of apps you can have, the pop-up windows, everything works fluidly and I can use all my apps at once. The next thing is a fairly obvious difference, but it one that I use a lot and that's the S Pen. So obviously the Pixel 7 Pro does not come with a built-in stylus or S Pen. On Samsung, I can easily use it to take notes, not only do that, but translate things online. I can do math if I need to make solutions for my students as I'm a math instructor, I can do that easily. I've got a little coloring book for stress relief. Bixby Vision lets me find stuff online, write on your calendar to make appointments. The S Pen can also be used, like if you're in an app and you wanna select text, you can use Smart Select. Uh, select an image. So if you go like into Instagram, one of my favorite ways to use this also to create thumbnails or other content for my social media is if I'm in here and let's say I want to grab one of these photos, I can go to smart select. I can grab just a piece of the photo if I want, and then I can share that or save it, whatever I want to do with my social media. It's an indispensable tool and the screenshot tool on a phone like the Pixel 7 Pro just isn't quite the same as having the S Pen and all the control and features that I get with the S22 Ultra. Now the next thing is display brightness. Now I had this conversation in my last video's comments with someone talking about display brightness. I forgot who it was, so I apologize to them, but they were mentioning that the Pixel 7 Pro is supposed to top out at 1500 nits of peak brightness and the S22 Ultra gets 1750. So already the S22 Ultra does lead outdoors, which for me is important because here in Phoenix, Arizona, it is very, very bright and sunny almost year round, even in the winter, you know, it's relatively warm here and sunny. So I really do need that extra peak brightness and Samsung definitely has the advantage. I also have not noticed, and I do have a tool for measuring screen brightness, the Pixel 7 Pro get up to the full 1500, maybe around like 1250 to 1300. And if it ever does touch 1500, it's only for a very short time. Whereas Samsung's increased brightness outdoors is for a very sustained period of time. Samsung can show you an incredibly bright screen for a really large time. And it also doesn't heat up like the Pixel 7 Pro does. The Pixel 7 Pro starts heating up a lot. Some people have been doing some uh, actual numbers on this over at XDA and other sites 
And it's pretty crazy how much battery you lose just using this outdoors. Of course, you're gonna lose more battery using a phone outdoors, but it doesn't get nearly as hot, nearly as warm, or drain as much battery on the S22 Ultra. And a lot of people have shown that and proven it in, in various different you know results that they have. And I'll try to link some of those below so you guys can see it. So definitely that extra brightness on the display is uh, fantastic for me. They both have great displays in terms of clarity and everything. The color profile just depends on which one you prefer in that sense. But at the end of the day, I definitely think the brightness is a huge advantage for me personally. Uh, the next thing that the Pixel doesn't offer is a de desktop experience. And Samsung offers that using Samsung DeX. There's a lot of ways you can find Samsung DeX. But if you go, usually what I do, I know people always get upset with me. They're like, you just put it in the quick settings. I don't use it as much as I used to. But if you go to Samsung DeX, Samsung DeX basically allows you to connect an entire desktop setup by connecting a TV or a monitor, getting a mouse and getting um, a keyboard. And you can basically use this like you would a PC and turn your S22 Ultra into a desktop experience. You can't do that very easily and certainly not in the same streamlined way on the Pixel 7 Pro. This is an advantage when I wanna travel or go out and take you know, you know, know, photos or do some research and stuff. And if I wanna just carry around you know, a portable monitor, I'm actually gonna do a review on the Leapow 15 inch monitor I've been using. I can kind of carry my phone, just connect it, do some light photo editing and things on the go. And it's you know a little bit easier than bringing along my big laptop if I have that portable monitor, which is quite a bit lighter actually than uh, my 16 inch MacBook Pro. The final thing is customization. Now, both of these phones do run Android, obviously, but Samsung makes it so much more robust to you know customize your device with their own apps. Now, of course, you can install on your Pixel 7 Pro, if I wanted to, I can install Nova Launcher on here and I can get custom icon pack and do all that kind of cool stuff. And also the theming and color options that Google has built in are great. But compare that to what I can do on my Samsung device using Samsung's Goodlock suite of software, which isn't installed out of the box, but it is a Samsung app and you can install it and you can do so many crazy things. Change the way your keyboard looks, change the way your lock screen looks, which is actually now built into One UI 5.0, change your S Pen menu, change your icons and your icon pack by using Theme Park. There's an unlimited number of things that you can customize on the Galaxy S22 Ultra by using Goodlock. Samsung also just has more customization in general. One of my favorite one is the keyboard. Some people always ask about this. If you see my keyboard, how it lights up down there. That's all done within the One UI 5.0 launcher using Goodlock and Theme Park. So I love that I can customize my Samsung more granular way. Things like One Hand Operation Plus that lets me get pop-up widgets like this one. Just really cool features that Samsung has in a customization sense. Now, some people are gonna prefer, you know, the lighter sense of pixel skin uh, on Android 13, and that's fine, but I really like that deep customization that I get. So those are five reasons for me that the Galaxy S22 Ultra destroys the Pixel 7 Pro, and probably the reasons why I'm gonna eventually migrate back to this as my main phone once I finish my review on the Pixel 7 Pro. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification icon for future videos like this. Also, please, please, please check out the mystery boxes. 100% free shipping in February. Uh, if you're going to order an S23 Ultra or any of the S23 family, be happy to send those out. Appreciate you guys checking out this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.